A Bayes classifier is a type of generative probabilistic model. So for instance, if I tell you you're in a specific class, let's say class number five, then there's an explicit density P of X given that I'm in class number five. So I actually have a density for describing how the feature vectors, um, the density of the feature vectors when I'm in that specific class. But the interesting thing is that if I want to classify whether something belongs to class number five or class number two, I don't actually care about how the data um, lies within those specific classes. All I care about is whether this thing is class number five or class number two. And that motivates discriminative classification models. These are models that explicitly model P of Y given X. In other words, the probability of being in a particular class given X, and it would do so without modeling the densities for each class um, individually. That probably doesn't make entire sense, and this difference between generative and discriminative probabilistic models will probably only really stick once we've looked at a few different discriminative models. But in this video, I do hope to convey a little bit of the fundamental differences between these two um, approaches. And we're going to work towards um, basically the background that we need for one particular discriminative model, logistic regression, that we'll look at in some future videos. So in a generative model, we normally have a process by which we can almost reverse engineer how the model made its prediction. And through that reverse engineering, come up with a way from, in which we can actually generate data from the model. So in the case of classification, if you look at something like the Bayes classifier, we saw in the previous video that we can model that as a combination of two things a density term and this prior probability. So the density term is specific to each of the individual classes. And this prior probability is basically the probability that I'll be in a specific class when I don't know anything about the input yet. And, and to do this, to build a, a, a concrete base classifier, we had to choose forms for these two terms, for the density term and for the prior probability. Now this type of model is referred to as generative and that's because you can actually generate data if you've built a model in this way. So if I wanted to generate some data from this model, I could first sample a class from P of Y and then I can sample data from that class because I've got a class specific density. So I take my sampled class, I find its density and I then grab a sample from um, from that density. But in many cases, we aren't actually interested in generating data. We're interested in classifying data in the case of classification. And furthermore, it might actually be quite tricky to model this density for each of the separate classes. So the idea behind discriminative models is to just model this probability directly. So we're not going to waste resources or time to model this and this separately. We're just going to go smash bang directly for the thing that we're actually interested in. And like before, we're going to use some training data to fit the parameters of this discriminative model. It's called discriminative because it really only cares um, about whether I'm in some specific class without caring about how the data lies in the space. So in this slide, I'm just going to briefly kind of build up towards one particular discriminative model called logistic regression. And I'll say this again, but despite the name, it has regression and the name it's actually a classification model. So in this case, we're looking at binary classification. Um, it's a case where our input can either be in class zero or class one. And in this case, we could, for instance, use this function. So we've got this feature vector X and we've got this parameter vector W. Now, if we did linear regression, which we're not doing here, we're doing classification. In linear regression, you could predict the output as W transpose times X, the dot product between my parameter vector and my feature vector. Okay, and this thing 
can give you any number, right? Depending on the um, parameter vector, you can get numbers like infinity and minus infinity. Okay, maybe not that extreme, but you can get, if your input features are very, very big, then you can get a very big number here. If your imp feature vectors are, um, you know, very, very small or negative numbers, then you can get a very large negative number here. But what we're interested in is modeling a probability. A probability needs to be between, be between 0 and 1. And it also needs to sum to 1 for all the classes. So what this model does here is it basically says, let's take something that looks like the output of linear regression, but let's then squash it with this function here to be between 0 and 1. And this function here, that thing here, uh, which is defined just on the other side, that's called the sigmoid function. Um, and I'll draw it out in a second. So you can play around with this a little bit, go and plug in some, some values here. But the output of the sigmoid function, if the input is some number, let's just call it A, then the output of the sigmoid function will always be between 0 and 1. Pretend that that's a straight line. Okay, um, the sigmoid function is defined in this way. So if A is at, let's say we're very far minus infinity, then we have one divided by one plus E to the minus minus infinity. That's humongous, so that's humongous. So this whole thing here is humongous and one divided by something humongous is equal to zero. So when A is at minus infinity, we're very, very close to zero. If A is at infinity on this side, you can convince yourself. So you've got e to the minus infinity, that thing becomes close to zero. And you've got one divided by one. So you're at one here. And at zero, we're going to be at a half. So the plot, uh, plot it in Python, if you want to, it passes through a half there. And it looks like this. So you're going um, from very close to zero, it comes up, and then it has this kind of slanted shape. That's a little bit disgusting, so go and plot it in Python to make sure that you can see that. But the important thing here is that this function basically squashes any input number so that it, it's between zero and one. And what we can now do is we can basically take some of the experience from linear regression and we can hack it so that we can do classification by taking something that looks like a linear regression output and by squashing it. In some follow-up videos, we're going to look at logistic regression classification in a lot more detail.